oh, like, something's up tonight. You know, like, there's a big job that's been going on, and Flynnrich and Michael are involved, and that Arcanus is has been very you know snappy and concerned this whole week uh, regarding Captain Bromley and his latest expedition. What does what does sound look like? Oh, you're muted, buddy. So Sal Diore, uh, 10 years ago, um, he is a hobgoblin. He's about 48 at this point, uh, 10 years ago, and um, accomplished enforcer for uh, Barbaretti family, has been for 20, 25 years. Uh, worked his way through the ranks until now he's sort of the lead uh, enforcer, uh, often on uh, Michael Arboretti's, uh personal retinue and guard. Um, hears a lot, but never says anything. Uh, as a hobgoblin, sort of a, a soldier filled with armor, uh, with honor. His, uh, at this point, you know, he has his sort of mane, he has his sort of very leonine features of a hobgoblin, um, has tied back into a top knot, uh, long sort of black hair, a little bit of salt and pepper, starting to get into a little salt and pepper sort of across his muzzle as well. Sort of these hard, uh, cold eyes. He wears this uh, sort of beautiful uh, scale mail, very functional, but also very presentational, uh, polished impeccably, uh, fitted to his very athletic uh, and uh, lithe form. Um, intimidating even with just a look, he is able to usually shut down most anyone and uh, if it comes to it, he wields a a glaive, this huge glaive uh, that uh, he carries with him and is worn across his back and that wields uh, incredibly deftly using its reach to cut down most people before they can even get close to make any kind of attack. Um, he also has a flail on him, uh, it's sort of the brutal uh, blunt force instrument of his people and uh of his uh religion to anyone who does make it close enough um the flail is a messy messy weapon used to maim even more than it is to uh to kill um if you want to get inside with sal diore inside of his glaive which is a quick death he is going to make you pay dearly for having the audacity to come and try to attack him within the range of that flail. He is, uh, I assume down sort of with Michael Arboretti. Um, he sees, um, he sees Flynn go off. Uh, I'm sorry, down with, uh, Arcanus and sees, uh, Flynn go off to get Michael. And, uh, I would assume Arcanus probably sends him to go in, see what's going right. on make sure there's another yeah. set of ears and honorable eyes on whatever might be happening certainly in the state right. that Arcanus is in at this point yes uh he certainly values your opinion and your uh, your loyalty even higher uh, and of course that glaive comes in handy in all sorts of situations when you're in the line of business that you guys are in and uh Arcanus will uh, uh bid the group of you re-enter and say the spell Scry for Bromley. See if you can find him. Yep. Um. Uh, if given the opportunity to greet Sal, uh, Flynnwich would come over and even though Sal is much taller, uh, he would work his way around where he would be able to kind of grip his arm and offer like a kiss on the cheek and when brought in close to the ear of Sal, he would say, There might be trouble. As he pulls back. Sal uh, sort of growls back at him. Let's solve it now, then. We're going to try. We're going to try, all right? Um, Mike, let's, uh, let's set it up. Get the, we need water. We need everything in the bowl. Yeah. Set everything up. All right. When Michael would go off, uh, presumably leaving Sal and Flynnrich alone, Flynnrich is going to look back at Sal and say, 
he didn't end the spell. It, uh, Brom, it, something ended for him. That's not a good sign. Brom takes precautions. Yeah. For yeah. both what you're trying to do, but also to make sure he's not interrupted. What could have yeah. done that? Listen, I don't know. You to speculate. I want you to find him, Arcanus will say, with an unnat- uh, almost supernatural level of hearing. Yes, boss. Yeah. We'll give it our best shot, hey? And he will begin to perform the scry spell, attempting to locate Brom. Yeah, the spell um, goes off uh, as you complete the uh, ritual components to uh, create the magic uh, with Michael's help. And the two of you see the island from the... Uh, kind of like the mind's eye of like almost from the sky, right? You're like seeing it from the air and you see the island. There is no ship. Uh, there is no signs of life. And uh, there seems to be like a low mist around the island. And only I'm the one seeing this, right? As far as I'm the one that cast the... As far as you know, yeah, yeah. Michael has assisted you in creating it, but he hasn't cast it with you. Like eerily calm waters as well? Completely still looks like a, yeah. uh, there hasn't been a storm. There's no wind. It looks like a calm night in the sea. He's going to try to push it, try to see if he can glean anything else from this. And as he pushes in, at the last minute, what he's going to do in case he is being, he is being watched in doing this, he is going to cast that mind's eye to the sky and see if he can read the stars above this island to get a location. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you uh, look up and uh, the clouds obscure everything. Despite it being a clear night, uh, the sky is almost unreadable, immutable. Uh, and there is something even stranger than that um, normally you would be able to pierce through that veil with your magic something here is preventing you from doing it. it's almost like it's almost like uh, it's blurring everything like there's a film over silent then he would look for his friend Brom any hint of he, he or his crew wreckage mm-hmm. bodies yeah, you search for maybe as long as you know, twenty minutes scrying through, uh, searching the surroundings uh, with your mind's eye, and there is no sign that anyone has been on the island, and there's no sign of a ship having been here recently, or if there was, it's gone. Can he scry under the water? Uh, you can to a uh, to a level. And uh, once you get down like to a certain level of darkness, um, you know where there's no like moonlight coming through, you can't see anything. Anything floating like beneath the surface, just rigging or foodstuffs or debris, Nothing flotsam, and jetsam. Nothing would suggest to you that the captain's here. He would quit the spell then. Arcanus leans forward eagerly. Well, oh, something, something happened. Something. This isn't. I couldn't. Listen, he's. I can't see him, but that doesn't mean anything. He's, Brom. He 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 takes protections. He has spells on his boat on himself. I could have been looking right at him, but he's... I can't see him. I saw an island, but... uh, I don't know where it was. I knew we trusted that pirate too much. You can't not trust him, boss. He's never let us down before. He's never double-crossed us. 
This is Brahm. Clearly different. He is an other. I know what's at stake. Listen to He's sound. always been honorable in his dealings with us. Why would that change? He is a he is family. Even if he is not blood. Right, right. Boss, if, if he was gonna double cross us, he never would have called. He never would have sent a spell. He would never would have started talking to us. He we just never would have heard from him again. Perhaps. Give him a chance. Where was the location? We could send out a ship. I don't know. It was obscured. Everything was... What do you mean? You don't everything. Know. Everything was obscured. I don't know if it was Brahm's magic. You know, he hides himself from people like me so he can do what he does. So, you know, I, it, I should have been... I should have been able to get through it, but I couldn't. Um, Everyone, out of here, now. You know better than to cross our kind of 20s in a mood like this. Yeah, Saldori, if anyone pauses, escorts them out and closes the door off to Arcanus's chamber. Yeah, Michael kind of looks at the two of you and he's like, isn't there something we can do? We can uh, trust in Brahm. Got a faith. That's not going to be enough for Arcanus, you know that. It's gonna have to be, Sal, because um <laughs> we got we got nothing left here. Right? Trust in Brahm. He will come back. That's what I saw enough. I'm gonna go down to the docks, I'm gonna Speaks to some of the people there. They know him. Mike. <laughs> he come on. He quick, uh, you know, quick steps out of here with a, uh, a spell and kind of blinks for a second. And he's like twenty feet away. And he's like, "I'm going to find him." And storms out. Jesus, Sal. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Well, you oh, need to boy. find out. Think oh, of something. Jesus. That's why you're smart. Tell me what to point my blade at, and I'll take care of it from there. But I need to go make sure Michael doesn't get himself killed. And so, so something ain't right. What do you Listen, mean? Listen, I'm not gonna. Something ain't right. It who else? None of, the, none of this feels right. Who else is as powerful as you? Our family is unmatched when it comes to magic. I love you, my friend. I love you like a brother. I appreciate the uh, the cheerleading, but there are there are those out there that can best me, but there aren't that many. But not who would know about our business. Not that who would not be in who right would know spot. about our business. <laughs> None of this is right. None of this is right. None of this is right. Yeah, let's keep the kid out of trouble. Jeez, let's keep the kid out of trouble. Yeah. Saudi or a the two of, yeah the two of you follow after him you know Michael to be like this he's very hot headed and impulsive keen to prove himself to his father and to the family just like his father they they share a lot in common in that way um when you get down to the docks and uh you uh you start hearing some kind of shouting like a commotion uh down the end of the street and um as you kind of turn the corner down to the docks you know where you know this is the area that you guys own this is like your your neighborhood basically like you own all of the, the bars and restaurants around here they owe you you know fealty because you protect them. um you uh turn and there's a huge commotion and shock out by uh this one of these bars where it looks like a, a fight has spilled out into this kind of street which isn't an uncommon thing to happen um there are certain, of course, rules that you guys have about you know, fighting one another. You're not allowed to you know, kill family or, you know, you're not allowed to get things to escalate too far. A good old fist fight isn't too bad. 
Um, but you'll see that uh, there's a man who's lying dead on the floor. Uh, he uh, looks to be a sailor or some kind of uh, pirate, uh, you know, type. And uh, through his heart, there is like a shard of magical ice uh, that Michael has put through his chest. Uh, and he's standing over him, like, shocked. There's blood on his face from where they've been fighting. And worst of all, uh, the town guard are here. Someone's, they were clearly walking by, you know, coincidence, uh, chance these things do happen, you can't keep them out forever. Uh, and you see that they've, they've turned and they're, they're going to grab him. Uh, and, uh, Michael's just in shock and just lets himself get taken uh, by these uh, these guards and someone starts seeing to the body of this dead sailor. As he's being dragged away, he makes eye contact with both Flynnridge and Sal and there's something in his eyes which tells you that he's not sorry. Damn, oh, God. Wait! Hey, uh, wait. The the officer turns. She's she's, she's one that you, you you recognize. She's on your payroll, um, and uh, she kind of uh, turns. Uh, her name is Sergeant Dancy. At this point, she is a uh, just in her twenties, up and comer, easily manipulated by you guys. But there's a shred of fiber in her. She'll turn. Glenrich. Sal, what do you? What, do you, what the fuck what do you, do you expect me to do with this? Why are you taking that kid, huh? Can't take the kid. Did you? I. We all just saw this. All right. What'd this... you say? What did everyone you... see here? You ran him through the heart of that spike. Listen, listen. You didn't do anything. I don't want any trouble. I know. This is your territory, but we can't not report this. We're going to take him in, and you guys are going to be able to see him. Okay, but that's that's the bottom line. The uh, the chief is really cracking down on all this stuff. And you know, and she points back to one of the... There's a mage uh, with them, um, and uh, you can tell that he's like in the middle of a spell and has been like casting a message. Um, it's like they've got one of them with, with all of us right now, every team. Flynnrich will immediately cast Counterspell against the message. Mm. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, it, gets, no. it immediately counters, and the, the guy like looks in consternation around himself. No, no, no. Listen. I think you guys... I think everybody here saw something the wrong way. Yeah, that guy's dead, but... I'm the one that killed him. Why are you taking this kid in? Flynn. Really? Sal looks at Flynn. What are you doing? And then he raises his eyebrow for a sign from Flynnrich. Sal will asking. turn around. Or, yeah, Flynnrich will turn around and he will. One of the necklaces that he has is made of copper wire and he will kind of hold it for a second. And in the ear, Sal will hear. As soon as they get the kid in lock up and they know he's there, they'll kill him and you know it. One of our enemies will get him. I look to Sergeant Dancy and go. Shit, yeah. <laughs> Listen. It was Flynnrich. I saw it. The kid look was just okay. there. Okay. Listen. Listen. If this is how this is going to go down, and I'm expecting a hell of a paycheck for this. You will be compensated. Anything after this, I'm taking Flimridge in, anything that happens after this is out of my control. It's with the chief. You understand? Can handle it from there. Just All right. give me Michael. All right, and fucking look after my guys, okay? She got to mention motions to her squad that she doesn't want to get hurt. Yeah. You will be well taken care of. <sighs> you have it on Fine. my hey. word. You're doing, you're still on your jobs. You're just doing your jobs here. Hey, taking you know, the right defense. Everybody, 
everybody saw this. You know, Sal saw it. He's an upstanding citizen. Yeah, I the, am. Like the 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 restaurant you know pub owner comes out. He's on your payroll. Agrees with everything you say. Like they take a full statement, and everyone suddenly agrees. Left Limbridge did this. Uh, they know Michael, and they do not want to say anything against the Albrady family because that's the end of their jobs and their lives. Uh, the rest of her squad are convinced enough by Sergeant Dancy and her decision. And uh, Michael's still in, like, clearly in shock. He's almost lifeless, you know, uh, not really reacting. Sort of goes with Sal and, uh, you know, probably just like takes your hand and is led by you. Yeah, if Flynnrich uh, gets a chance, when he passes by uh, Michael, he's going to like hold the boy for a second, pull him in as they're probably a lot closer in height than Sal and Flynnrich. He's going to pull him down, he's going to kiss him on the cheek, and he's going to say, Keep looking for Brom. Got free run of the laboratory. Get in there. You, you find him. You find him. It's up to you now, kid. Okay. There's a I'll be back in. Steel in there. Just yeah. Give me some There's time. Still in his eyes, that immediately reminds you of his father. Uh, I can. It's that same kind of unrelenting look that he is going to get this job done, and uh, he nods for a moment, coming back round and watches as you are taken away by Sergeant Dancy. Yes, Sal um, goes down on one knee, something he doesn't do for many people. Looks Flynn in the eye and just goes, the family remembers always, and so do I. I know you do, buddy. And he'll come forward and touch his forehead in uh to sal's and i know you do bud just uh don't want to forget about me right (laughs) and he will not happen and i take michael back to the restaurant to his father you explain what's happened and flinrich waddles off with the town guard Mm-hmm. Um, you explain what's happened to Arcanis, who is furious with Michael. Um, although you actually sense a small amount of pride, this is actually his first kill, and um, he has ever been like hard on Michael for not being hard enough, for you know being soft. Uh, and you know he shouts at him and he you know curses him out uh, as you'd expect him to, uh, to but. Uh, at the end of it, uh, he kind of brings him in for a hug and, you know, uh, kisses him on the forehead and gives him his sort of like approval uh, of this and explains to both you and uh, Michael that uh, it won't be long until Flynn Rich is, you know, out of there. You know, they look after their own. Flynn Rich, meanwhile, uh, you are taken into jail, into custody and thrown in a cell. Sergeant Dancy uh, puts you in the nicest one available, um, and it's kind of swiftly out of her hands, out of her control. As uh, they know you to be a spellcaster, they, you know, strip you of your uh, arcane uh, foci and any materials that you'd have uh, uh, on you, and kind of place you in, like, an overnight cell for now, uh, which is likely to change due to the nature of the crime that you have been uh, accused of committing. Now, um, some time passes at this point uh, as uh, Sal, you go about your business enforcing and uh, word of uh, Glenridge is uh, not brought to you uh, you're expecting your friend to be out immediately but several days pass and uh, he hasn't uh, returned uh, and there's been no word from Arcanis uh, of this and so, you know, you decide to bring it up at some point during one of your family meetings. Um, naturally, you know, concerned for the whereabouts of your friends, wanting to know if you can help at all. Um, Arcanis uh, explains to you uh, the following. Tal, uh, Flynnrich, he has uh, done a very noble thing. Would you agree by saving young Michael? Yes, of course. It was and that's the why right thing. We've, we've been trying our hardest 
to do anything, everything we can to get him out. There is a mage, this new uh, chief they answer to here. She's come in and changed everything. They've got Flynnrich in a high security anti mage cell. Worst of all, she's almost impossible to buy. One of those hoity toity types that can't be bored at all and busting them out is barely an option. Now, we've tried everything we can, but I'm not sure there's anything we can do now. Then we try harder. Everyone has a price. You taught me that yourself. Of course, and we will find her. In the meantime, it seems only appropriate that in such moments as these, we stay united as a family with coordination in place, and the same management of a family must be upheld despite Flynnrich. Imprisonment. Michael will take the seat. Sal looks questioningly at the young Michael and looks at Arcanus and then takes a look over to Ruby, who has always been the scheming one, has always been about the blood that these others who have been brought in are not you know, blood is more important than anything else whereas certainly Arcanus in his early days was there were many ways to be family but Ruby right. Ruby he looks at she yeah she's the, the matriarch of the family and uh, an elf uh, she is uh more you know, aloof uh, most of the time uh, than uh, Arcanis. So he's definitely been very stressed out in the past few weeks at least. Uh, she looks prideful as she hears about Michael's, you know, um, you know, n- new uh, position and uh, looks towards you, Sal, and says, Fear not, we're going to do everything we can to get Flynnridge back. There won't be single stone left unturned. We'll use all our power. And Michael, you know, seems like he's hearing us for the first time, but kind of nods and uh, kind of puffs up his chest a little bit and takes the third seat at the Arboriti table. Sal Diori just looks from this Arcanus to Ruby, to Michael at this united front. Of course, everything in our power. At that, we cut to Flynnridge. Flynnridge, it's been two weeks and you've heard nothing. You've been thrown into a cell with anti-magic wards and transported to essentially this high-security cell uh, in solitary confinement. The uh, mage, uh, the new kind of chief that they've been calling her, um, her name is Carolyn. And from what you've gathered, uh, she's an Asima. Uh, and uh, has a keen distaste for uh, criminals, thugs, and uh, especially those criminals who uh, are are magic users, you know, working uh, to make their policing job even harder. She's new. You hear she's from uh, outside of uh, Warsip, and she's been brought in to crack down on, you know, everything around here. She finds you one day in your cell, this tall uh, Asimar, um long kind of wizardly court robes on her. Flynnrich. Flynnrich, Flynnrich, Flynnrich. Many a crime you have escaped before, it would seem. Your record is 
Quite the list. Never been charged. Never convicted. Never convicted. Never convicted. A lot of misunderstandings. I I think that if you uh you uh speak to some of those witnesses, you'll find out that I had nothing to do with this unfortunate man's death on the docks. It's uh I I even heard in here that he slipped. He poom, icicle really? right to the heart. Yeah. Mm, I had heard the same thing until I really spoke with some of those witnesses. And I brought them here for their full testimony. And it was interesting what happened there because they changed their mind. And she kind of snaps her finger and one of the you know witnesses, like a sailor looking guy, kind of walks in with his dead face, almost yeah, completely you know, lifeless. Um, and she says, you saw Flintridge kill that man, didn't you? And he says, yes, mistress, I did. <laughs> There are a lot more like this, you know. Very oh, I tell wild you what. account. Carolyn, is it? You give me back my stuff, and uh, we can see exactly who can win over this jury. Oh, well, I can I'm play these tricks too. Not going to be an option, uh, Mr. Flinridge, because, uh, well, I've seen to your sentence. It's one that I think you'll like because it spares your life. It's something I like my to do. My life is in yours to give like take. Yourself. Rats, you give me back my stuff. We'll have some fun here, Caroline. <laughs> oh, I will have some fun with you, Flint. Because it's really just fitting, don't you think? For rats like you, when you're caught in a barrel to get burned. That's one of the punishments that your people do, isn't it? Yes. I've heard as much. The Arboriti family. They will be sent a message, as will you. There will be no unlawful use of magic in my water deep. Again. You just did unlawful use of magic. She I don't think I can pins you up against the wall with a like a force push. Uh, and um, she kind of like with another finger like flicks open the gate uh, to your cell. Um, she gets out this uh, tincture. Uh, this little bottle it says this stuff really nasty really burns you out from the inside but in small doses it's fine good for a cold or a really bad infection but in large doses one word to overdose on it it burns the veins from you those ones that use magic now you won't forget how to use spells you'll still remember You'll just be completely incapable of ever casting again. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you can't do this. Oh, but I can. And I will. You can't do this. You cast, you know how long it takes to get here. You can't burn this out of me. Oh, my sweet Flynnridge, but I'm going to for all of the crimes that you and your scum family have committed. Take my magic from me. You know what, fuck you. <laughs> we'll see if you talk like that after your first dose. And she jams the liquid down into your throat and the acid just runs its way through your body, coursing through your veins burning you from the inside out, torturing away the magic like a wildfire spreading across a forest. And Flynnrich, this is just the first of many undergoings of this torture which you suffer at the hands of Carolyn. And you are, over the course of the next few months, completely burned out from the inside with your magic. And when she's finished with you in that, she throws you away into a cell, a high security cell, no anti-magic ward. And uh, she in fact takes down the wards that are up there uh, because she knows that there's nothing you can do anymore. And she leaves you there to rot for 10 whole years.
And then... There was Ramsey. Ramsey, cutting to about maybe six months ago, what do you look like? So Okay, so we're not going back. Not ten years. Okay. Um... Okay. What do you look like? So, Ramsey is a drow. Mm. Um, six months ago, I guess she would have been uh, still working in a hospital. She mm-hmm. would wear like professional medical garments or whatever. That would be like the clean white coat and, um, you know, the matching alchemy belt with different herbs and potions and bottles and, and things like that. Very um, pristine and professional. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, um, you know, you've been working here for, for some time um, on uh, various different, you know, uh, tinctures and uh, and the like. You know, you've been uh, working as hard as you can. You've been uh, coming up with various different concoctions and the like. One of the things that I believe Ramsey's been working on is a uh, uh, cure for the death curse, which has been occurring in Chult and, of course, across the realms uh, in general, which is this uh, soul-destroying curse which doesn't allow people to die properly and is uh, a great grievance to the world. Uh, something that you thought about working on before. Um, and uh, it's certainly something that, through your training under your, uh, your master, you have some kind of understanding uh, of you know, alchemical formula and procedure of how to distribute cures for plague, something that you've you know, probably even worked in on a smaller scale here in the uh, facility. Um, for uh, Ramsey, do you think you've been working on this yet? Or is this something that um, you've been, you've you know, had in the back of your mind and you're going to work on in the future? Uh, this is absolutely like what she's working on now. I, I think mm-hmm. that like there's there's nothing else that anyone in the medical field would be working on. Would be working on right like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, problem, pre- like super prevalent right. problem. Yeah, th- there's obviously, you know, in this place, you know, you're in, in a water deep right now, so there's probably some, you know, street fights and the like, and dead people that turn up, <laughs> uh, uh, that kind of thing. But yeah, certainly that seems the most pressing. Um, I'm going to go as far as saying that Ramsey is the, like, the leading figure on this. Uh, Cure, at least in the water deep area, right? Like this is something that you've been uh, like leading the charge on uh, with with everyone else. So um, one day in your your you know your field tent, your lab, um, there is uh, an unexpected visitor. Uh, not a patient, not someone who works here. Uh, it's a uh, handsome young man. You would probably guess to be a half elf. Uh, slick black uh, hair. Um, wears a very fine, like, three-piece suit, uh, and smiles disarmingly. Says, uh, excuse me, uh, would you be Dr. Ramsey? Uh, she's probably sitting at a desk, uh, fiddling around with things, taking notes and, and watching experiments and seeing what happens and looks up and says, it's Dr. Hunt to you, but yes. Ah, <laughs> so... So very sorry. I, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not very good at uh, reading. They say I'm much more better at uh, uh, talking, uh, which I'm not actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, just. Um, Are you sick? Anyway, no, 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 no. Actually, I'm not. Uh, in in many ways, I'm, I'm very healthy. Uh, in in other ways, I I, I, I have been sick before, <laughs> but um, I'm I, I'm not sick now. So uh, that's that's the good news, you know. Occasional chest cough, you know. She, at this point, she like puts down whatever like bottle, bottle she's holding, and she says, "Sir, I'm not sure if you're aware that there's a very prevalent curse going oh. around right now, yes. and I'm extremely no. busy trying to solve it. So if there's nothing I can do for you, and you're not sick, and you're no. just wasting my time, I'm going to have to ask you to leave." Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm not going, no. Uh, there is some uh, v- very important business I, I, I think you can uh, help me with. Um, and and, and you, are, you are very underfunded here, correct? I've, I've heard that uh, this, this whole operation is, that isn't receiving the, the kind of funding 
that it requires, and, and that's very important. Well, no, we haven't been receiving, receiving a lot of support recently since no one's been able to find a cure, so morale right. is low. Right, morale is low, money's low, uh, uh, the only thing that isn't low is tax, <laughs> am I right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> I was hoping that I could uh, help you uh, with your funding uh, difficult. You want to make a donation? No, uh, almost like a donation, but more like a uh, business proposal, I suppose. Um, you see, uh, me and uh, my own, uh, we're from uh, wealthy uh, philanthropists, and we're um, <clears throat> very excited in new opportunities, particularly in the uh, medical field. Continue. And we have a substantial amount of gold to invest in a lead scientist uh, to, to find this uh, cure. And once you find the cure, thanks to our funding, uh, we would distribute it. So you want to be able to capitalize on suffering? Oh, goodness, no. That must be what it seems like uh, from the outside. From the inside, it's it's a lot different. Um, what, what we are really all about uh, is in fact um, helping people uh, through through whatever means uh, possible. And if we happen to uh, make some money while doing whatever so, whatever means they can give you, <laughs> you seem like a very smart woman, uh, Doctor Doctor Hunt, and uh, might I say a very beautiful one as well, that and a very clever one. Well, good because I was lying. I mean, no, um, that came out all wrong. Um, so, <laughs> um, <clears throat> Mr. Um, what, what was your name? Gerald. Oh, goodness. Mr. Gerald. I hate to be the one to break this to you, but, uh, <clears throat> fantastic. You don't seem to be very good at your job, but I'd like to inform you that I am very good at mine. Mm. You pointed out something interesting. I have. I'm aware. I have. Please don't interrupt. I'm aware that this current operation is underfunded. And I'm aware that with more funding, I could be the one to find the cure. I would love to be the one to have my name attached to that. So if that's something you're willing to make happen, I can meet you halfway. But I'd like you know a much more clear explanation of what my reward is going to be. Good idea. Uh, and, and you know, uh, I think uh, I have a way of doing that. And uh, my uh, boss, very nice man named Michael, and uh, he is very eloquent uh, in, in many ways. And um, he's ready to have a conversation with you if you would like to meet him for dinner. Have you heard of Arboretes? It's very good. The fettuccine is fantastic. Um, I must admit I, I don't really eat out much, but I'm willing to take you up on the offer solely for more information. I've of agreed course, to nothing. Of course. Yes, you've agreed to nothing. Uh, that's, that's, that's understood. So uh, I'll just... Um, Send a message and uh, evening tonight, uh, find your way down to Arboretes and uh, Michael will be there. You won't be able to miss him. Is there any description of what I should be looking for or am I just... Oh, uh, Michael owns the restaurant. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll show you. So he looks like a restaurant owner. That's the description you're going to give me, Gerald. Yes. Yes. Well, I could describe him. Um, he looks a little bit like me, more handsome, um, and uh, uh, it's charismatic, enigmatic. Um, this sounds like descriptors that he gave you. Hydromatic. Hydromatic. Uh, <laughs> Systematic. <laughs> Systematic. <laughs> I tell you, he is great like this. Like this. <laughs> 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 Oh my um, god. 
Gerald slash Gerald, uh, kind of, <laughs> right, I'll, I'll see you there tonight then. <laughs> and uh, scurries out from whatever hole he came. Um, that evening, do you find your way down to Arboretes? She does, and, and um, she will, you know, put on the nicest thing that she, she has. Obviously, she doesn't make a lot of money now. Um, but I want to go into a little bit of, like, who she is and where she came from, if I, if I may, for okay. a second. So you get some context of, like, her deal. You know what I mean? So, like, Ramsey grew up with absolutely nothing. Like, grew up on the streets had nothing, got nothing, knew no one totally by herself. And every day she would see like these doctors on the way to work. And like they would walk past like all the people on the street. They had these pristine white coats and these nice leather bags. And she saw that and she was like, that is what I want. That's money. That's what I'm going to get. And so like basically worked her ass off to get uh, into school and even though she like barely knew how to read and then um, finally worked her way through and became this apothecary and you know was living the life for a while and then this death curse came and then nobody could find a cure so now suddenly it sucks to be a doctor because no one has any faith in you nobody trusts you everybody's mad at you because everybody's dying and you're supposed to be the one to fix it and you can't so like now she's like well, this sucks. Like, this is not what I came in here for. She didn't come in here for because she had a passion for helping people, you know. So there, that that's the deal. That that's just I I felt like saying that, and I did. So she um has sort of been scraping by since the death curse hit. Has pay is decreasing, and just yeah. So she puts herself together as, as much as she can, and she wears um. Uh, an all black outfit and she has this uh, cloak that's sort of a play on a medical doctor's cloak but it's black and sort of mesh like and um, she has a darker belt with different sort of concoctions that she thinks may be more interesting to different clientele and um, she walks into the front door yeah uh, as soon as you step in uh, several of the waiters um, will uh you know, uh, come over towards you, recognizing you, hand you, um, or like take your coat, whatever, uh, and lead you over to Michael's uh, place. You see uh, one particularly gnarly looking hobgoblin uh, who seems to be serving uh, whole bucket loads of uh, fettuccine uh, around the place. Um, and as you step through to the restaurant, you'll uh, see Michael. He does, in fact, it seems like Gerald um, styles himself after Michael. Uh, because he has the same slick back hair. Uh, he's a half elf as well. Uh, you wonder if they might actually be related. Um, and uh, the slightly, you know, slightly pointy ears. Wears uh, even nicer suit with a little you know, corner pocket in. Um, and uh, smiles uh, towards you. His smile is less warm than Gerald's, which seemed fairly genuine, even though he was a bit of an idiot. Um, and he uh, looks at you more calculating than uh, Gerald does. Dr. Hunt, a pleasure. The pleasure is mine, uh, Michael, I presume. Michael Arboriti, yes. Enchanted. Shall we sit? He nods and, uh, and sits and says, I've already ordered for you. Oh, how assuming. I know all of the best food in the restaurant here. My friends make it. It's a family-owned mm -hmm. restaurant. We all know the best food. We look after our own. I see. So uh, what will I be having then? Fettuccine. It's fantastic. The dive. Well, I'll let you know. Dr. Hunt, I, uh, un I'm only understanding that you are a lead scientists on a very important cure for the death counts, and you're severely underfunded. All of that is correct. Gerald has informed me that you are willing to accept our offer, perhaps. You would hear more details. Yes, 
Yes, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say I've agreed. And I'm not quite sure if I am willing to, to be fair or to be clear. Gerald did not give a great description of, of what it was. He seemed very confused as to what his task was. Great is rarely an adjective used with young Gerald. He kind of like taps on his rings in a fashion not unlike his father's. We have like a moment yeah. of silence for the fallen Gerald. Yeah, he dies somewhere off, <laughs> off screen. He's not dead. Um, <laughs> F's in the chat. Just <laughs> press F for a um, Yeah, you all you watch as um, uh, the fettuccine comes over, uh, like steaming plates of fettuccine. Uh, maybe you, it's even Sal who's um, you know come over to to serve you guys because you know. Guys, got to run a restaurant as well. Yes, yeah, Sal would, uh, you know, especially for Michael, uh, would be um, bringing uh, out this because a special guest uh, of the family uh, to make sure that it was presented by the chef himself. Um, Sal has changed a lot in the last decade. Um, he was true to his word about Flindrich and he did keep bringing up uh, bringing up what was to be done the rumors of his magics being burned out of him and the more he spoke up the quicker he found himself being taken off of the big jobs off of the good security details until finally he was kind of a bouncer at the restaurant and then um not having a lot to do uh always had a good appetite so sort of would hang out in the kitchen and ended up learning the old chef's recipes and so he uh now his mane has gone pretty much completely sort of silver gray there might be a few wisps in there it's now instead of tied up in a warrior's top knot, it's sort of more pulled back in such a way that you would see of a cook to make sure their hair doesn't you know, fall astray uh, in a restaurant. Um, old scars uh, from his last couple missions when he was trying to prove himself and perhaps maybe got careless uh, now sort of cut through his face. One of his ears, in fact, is sort of seems to have a chunk of it fairly large chunk of it missing a big scar across sort of his muzzle um still fairly large in form but uh has gone soft um his midsection which used to be you know uh could break hands as much as his armor could is shows that he tastes and enjoys his food as much as others and you would uh he's starting to not necessarily over you know a huge paunch but he definitely has gone soft and can be seen that he enjoys his food has a bit of a belly now um and uh his armor is nowhere to be seen he sort of wears more just kind of a sort of not quite chef's robes they actually have a little more of an oriental flair to them um as is his culture but uh comes out and puts the fettuccine down and goes for our honored guests thank you uh, Ramsey just nods to him up politely sort of sizes him up a little bit and um gives him a nod of respect you know she's she's a doctor she knows where your scars have come from and so um after that she uh looks up at Michael and says you are your waiter has a lot of wisdom behind his eyes. Like I say, it's a family-run business. Everyone knows everyone. I see. But we're involved in many different industries and are looking to branch out, especially nowadays, into the field of medicine. So here's what I have to offer for you, Dr. Hunt. I can get you a hundred thousand gold pieces as a advance on your work. When it's finished, I'll give you an additional 300,000 gold pieces for your work. When you find the cure, distill it in such a form that we can distribute it. You will be paid in full for your work. 
if you fail, sure. then you will not be paid and we will reclaim one of you. Is there a way that I can be sure that you're going to come through? No offense, Michael. You seem lovely, but I don't know you. Fair enough. Uh, he uh, clicks a finger, and uh, Sal, you know, he's like snapping at waiters. One of those kind of guys. Uh, and um, classic waiter snapper. Uh, <laughs> Sal, he kind of gets your attention, uh, and uh, he kind of whispers to you, and it's like, catch the girl. Uh, Tosco, I think oh, you muted. Muted. And Sal does. He is not the warrior he once was, and his understands what his place is now. And so he goes and goes into the back room and to the kitchen, um, maybe taking a moment to stir a sauce or something, but not too long. He knows not to keep Michael waiting, right. but goes down the stairs to a hidden spot in the sort of underworks of the restaurant where the real business is and where Michael has left it out anticipating it would be needed. Comes up right. with a small chest uh, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, arrives yeah. back at the Set table. Set it down and yeah, Michael will say, thank you. Feel free to count it if you want, Dr. Abbott, but I can assure you it's all there. She opens it up and, and for a moment, you know, her eyes widen in excitement and she, you know, cracks a smile, um, but then tries to shake it and, and maintain the demeanor she's upheld and um, says, well, then my last question, what happens when it's done? What happens when we'll be, I found a cure we'll be and sold it? And we'll be very rich. And you expect nothing more from me? After that, our dealings are done. As I mentioned, if you fail to find us the cure, within six months, we will reclaim. I assure you, with this funding and this incentive, I won't. I believe that you will, Dr. Hans. It will be a pleasure doing business with you. The Arboriti family, very pleased to be working. And he extends a hand. Very many rings on this hand. Mm -hmm. She says, and I as well, and shakes it. We're going to cut back down below the restaurant where Sal, uh, you know, actually in a kitchen probably, uh, Sal you know, you've, you've probably just this moment here has been quite the realization is like Michael considers you a waiter and a fetcher of things. And like, this is probably a moment where it's like, wow, I'm really no longer the trusted, you know, person I was because I don't have, you know, I'm not a fighter anymore. Like, what am I doing here? I'm like wearing, you know, a chef's robe and I've, you know, I've let myself go. And, you know, it's, it's one of those moments of sort of realization, you know, crises that we all have sometimes where it's like, what am I? What am I doing? Um, as you stare at like the pot of fettuccine, which is before you, uh, yeah, you right. hear uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 like one of those. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, no, I think that he comes back into the kitchen. I don't think Michael has snapped at others, but not him before. And it, for some reason, that action he gets back after he walks back into the kitchen and he's there just sort of leans up against the stove his head just hung low and it is just what have I become at, at this point there's a 
that someone walks into like kind of back room, you know, you've got like the side entrance where you bring stuff yeah, through and people the back door, yeah, the, the kitchen door. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh you see an old friend. Um her name is Nicoletta, and she's from the Lucian family. Nicoletta Lucian is an old friend of yours. Um your families in the past have been rivals. Uh but nowadays, uh with the power of the Arboriti family over the past ten or, ten or so years having waned uh, a substantial amount, uh, the rivalry has been less fierce because they've just won, basically. They've taken over a lot of your old territories, as have various other gangs. The Lucian family have risen to power, and the Arboriti family have fallen from power and, and, and waned until really you are running a couple of quick scams. Um, bit of protection work here and there, but none of the smuggling because you're smuggling industry with Captain Brom has ended uh, very suddenly. Um, but Nicoletta's there, and she kind of no, you know, she's clearly just watched you have this in a moment. You're going to look up a little bit embarrassed, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she's, you know, long, really long blonde hair, uh, very beautiful, classically, um, and very pale skin, quite demure. Uh, and say, everything okay, Sal? Um, I sort of picture since we're contemporaries, she's while she still has blonde hair, maybe she dyes it or uses magical means right. that she sure. is you know an older woman, but quite yeah. uh, you know like me, uh, not in her prime, but uh, Sal sort of collects himself and straightens up to present to this old rival of his he, remembering old times. he sort of looks to. Uh, her face where she has a scar. Mm -hmm. I see you've kept my gift I gave you those years ago as I have kept yours. And he points to her uh, an old scar, older than some of the other ones that were through carelessness. Mm -hmm. This one that which was done back in his prime days and that she gave him. Yeah. She, she's wearing like an almost like a long Elizabethan style dress. Uh, mm -hmm. And she has these kind of like long white gloves on, uh, and she touches it almost like she's remembering like a kiss that you left on her yeah. cheek. Um, and uh, for a moment, she says, "Of course, we all like to hide some things about ourselves, but that's something that I'm proud of." But uh, I just came by for some for a drink. It's been too long. It has been. I could use one tonight with an old friend. Come back to ours. He sort of looks around him. You and he knows gonna miss you here? And almost as though she had read his thoughts. Yes, I will. And he takes off his apron and walks out with Nicoletta, I assume, yeah. with a smile. Again, that yeah. not just that old old friends yeah i, I, yeah, I even yeah. you know i even want to say that maybe there's some like there almost was a history there but like you guys were part of two different families and like there's always been a thing but like you know right they i think they're each other's maybe ones that got away or right. missed opportunity i think it's more missed opportunity than necessarily the one that got away that right. and we both know it we're both smart enough in this point wise enough and, you know, if things were different in a different time, in a different place. Um, right. I think he offers his arm. And maybe when yeah. not with others, she might even take it. Whereas normally she wouldn't make such mm. a, a gesture of, uh, you know, of her femininity. But to actually that he leads her through the back alley, then out onto the main street. You know, yeah, not the main main street, but they're both they're right, they right. all yeah, walk yeah. out of shady sides of town. So but yeah, I can see them yeah. strolling through the moonlight of sort of the old, maybe swinging by some of the places that was once once the Arboretes, then the Lucians, and sort of things that traded hands back and forth, and maybe remembering, oh, remember right. the summer, ah, oh, the summer of the drought. That was a we all were a bit hot and bothered that summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys, get, it's like walking down the thoroughfare of like the beach and like the it's like the equivalent of like the old amusement parks that are like mm -hmm. 
uh, used to be there in a sort of like a, a classically like romantic part of Waterdeep, which is which is you know, rarely found. Um, right. You come to the um, uh, the Lucian like estate, uh, and they have like bars and pubs here, and you know she takes you into uh, one of the pubs and gets a drink with you uh, in one of the booths, and uh, she's pretty upfront, and she's like, you know, Sal. I've uh, had a few things on the grapevine recently. I'm not sure how connected you uh, you are these days, but I hear that Flynnrich is getting out pretty soon. That his eyes pop, and he goes, and there's a deep, quick. There's the surprise on his face, and then that sinking of his heart again. That. Something he asked about for so long, something that he all but demanded, the one thing that he all but demanded of Arcanus and the Arboretti family that no one even told him. Right. Um, right. Yeah, it's it's and, he's been forgotten about and you know, it feels like clearer than ever, like this betrayal to you. Uh, of of your trust and like you the heard from yeah, the plane of your own influence yeah. and power as well, um, and for her to know about this and not you is you right. Know, kind and of he crazy does to, to some to anyone else. He might not admit this. But he goes, "No, I, I hadn't heard." Well, something else as well is that there's been a uh, ship sim closing in on water deep. Reports are that it's an old vessel, one lost to sea. Turntides, crimson serpents, been spotted. What? You remember old Captain Brom? How is that? How is that? I don't know. But Flynnrich and now this at the same time seems like a odd coincidence. I thought it was best that you should know you are friends of Flynn. And bro. Yes, it was. Well, it's when things begin to turn for us. Well, as the legend goes, if Garbaritis would have gotten a hold of that shipment, whatever it was Brom was looking for, well, things would be different than they are now. Maybe I he has. Perhaps. And he. There were a lot of people after that shipment, so. He looks at her when she says that and sort of lifts an eyebrow questioningly. Lots of families, you say? Plenty, I hear. You know, if they're coming back, well, maybe the old is back in with the new. Maybe this is your, uh, your chance. Get yeah. back in with uh, the Arborites, eh? Hmm. Be more than just a waiter? Mm. Yeah, there's a deep growl that sort of comes in his throat, and he folds his arms sort of over this paunch, and it's sad. He normally would have sort of flexed his sort of prodigious physicality and he feels nothing. That's the step of he you. sort of just shakes his head. I am not fit for much else these days and he looks to her So, well, you know, is it that could change? Is it you true? No, I'm. Is it true? I think you've always known it's. Uh, this. It's been true, Sal. You don't stay my age and look as good as I do. And she kind of grins at you. 
She appears as human, correct? Correct. And yeah. he just looks flat at her. No human has ever even come close to what you were able to do when I was in my prime. Well, there are certain powers that we've aligned ourselves with, as have your family. Everyone knows that you need to have an edge in Waterdeep. We look after our own. Listen, Sal, I can put you back in your prime. I can give you a taste of what we have. It's not going to be as much, but it'll be something. Something that they'll pay attention to you again. Uh, Never shot. She would know she had him, but mm -hmm. he will try to hold out with her for at least a moment longer. Families don't offer such gifts without a price. Is this from you? Uh -huh. Or is this from your family? It's from the family at my discretion. I would like you to look after my daughter. Your There's daughter. no one I trust more than you, Sal. And it pleases the family to have one of our own within yours. Especially with Bromley coming back. She will have to earn her way there. I will train her, I will watch her. And you know the ways of my people. If she is to earn a victory over our family, I will honor it, but I will also try to earn a victory for my own. Very good. We do not seek to destroy the Arboretes. That fight was won long ago. We wish to learn, and I wish for her to be elsewhere to learn. And she calls out, Drexel! Drexel, what do you look like? Yeah. All right. So Drexel, she kind of looks a bit like a half-elf a little bit. She's got slightly pointed ears. She's very, very pale. She's got very uh, pretty long, like maybe like mid-waist, um, straight black hair, but like one side's shaved with like geometric patterns. Um, She's got very, uh, in contrast with all the dark clothes that she's wearing, she's got like a full like chest piece that turns into a neck piece. It's got angel wings kind of going off on either side. She's got bright golden eyes that look kind of just out of place with the rest of her aesthetic. Uh, and she kind of has some steel knuckles just casually dangling from one of her hands. And she'll kind of just slink in to the room. Uh, she's pretty tall. She's about like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, ish and, and fairly slender, but she looks... Like she's been in a few scrapes, Got a couple scars, tattoo uh, work and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. she, she'll nod over towards Sal and say, Drexel, this is your new trainer, Sal Diore, the Arboriti fan. Salutations. It's a pleasure to meet you. He looks at her hearing the somewhat disdain in her voice and goes it's a pleasure to meet you as well and looking over to nicoletta goes yeah she's got a little teach her the old yeah I'll, i will i will teach her the old ways you understand i wouldn't have it any other way the new ways are Need some maturing. Refinement. A little bit of the 
elegance of odd our times together. Right. She will not go by her name. Her true name, at least. Of course. This will remain between us. And um, as uh, that happens, she calls over and a waiter comes by with a chalice and a bottle of red wine, or at least what looks to be red wine. Pours the crimson liquid into the cup. And uh, she kind of, like as a wine tasting, <laughs> smells it very good. And uh, pushes it across the table towards you, Sal. Um, I assume Sal's nose will pick up this is not wine. Right. And he looks to his old friend, picks up the chalice with a nod of gratitude, and drinks it. As you do that, the camera pans away to a distant prison cell. Somewhere dark and stormy on a dark night. What has what has happened to Flinridge? What does what does he look like now? Well, presumably if he's been in the same solitary cell or the same maximum security single bed cell, he has taken the bed and used it very Sarah Connor style as he has been able to move it and stand it up and with his stature, he would be seen inside just doing pull-ups over and over again. And with his shirt off, gone is the the softness of his prior occupation, the one that was bred from a power of magic and a love of wine and feasting. That life is gone, burned out of him the same way his magic was. And where the thin wisps of hair covered half of his head, the rest has been shaved off or perhaps transferred to the long, several-inch beard that points at the bottom of his chin. And as he pulls over and over again, the muscles rippling along his back and his arms, there are prison tattoos all over the entirety of his small frame. And some of them have numbers, some of them have letters, but if a wizard were to look on them, they would see that they are all the verbal or incantation components of a spell, from cantrips to ones of great power. But those words are the closest he can get to the magic. The day has come as the uh, lock to your cell is unbarred. And to finish the last of your exercises, we watch as the new Flynnrich, ten years later, steps out of the cell. On the same dark and stormy night as he walks out, back through Waterdeep. A ship is seen coming into port. It's old. It's rusted, covered in barnacles and seaweed. And a strange wind and mist carries it onwards towards Waterdeep, despite the fact that there are no crew manning it. The only person uh, who is on the ship uh, is one Captain Bromley. Captain, you're not sure where you are. You're not sure how you've gotten here. The last thing you remember was speaking to Flynnrich. And the ship carries you onwards on a natural wind back home towards Waterdeep. And that's what we're going to do in tonight's session of uh, Learn by Play. <laughs> oh boy. That was nice. fun. That was fun. <laughs> so I wanted to see a little bit of setting and uh, establishing backstories and who our characters were today. Um, and uh, next week we're going to get into the uh, the meat of it and figure out how all these characters work together now in uh, one day and how the, the family has changed. Um, 
Holy moly, that was fun. That was uh, awesome scenes from everyone, I felt like. And uh, it's, uh, it's, I can tell already it's going to be an epic story, so I just can't wait to see next week what you guys are going to get up to. Um, but we're going to have to wait until then, my friends. If you guys enjoyed the show, you can come follow us on Twitch uh, at Encounter Roleplay, twitch.tv forward slash Encounter Roleplay. Uh, if you want to see more, and we broadcast here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, which is 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So we'll see you guys then. But uh, let's quickly go around. What do we What do we think of tonight's shows? Um, how was that for you guys? Uh, let's start with Sid. Uh-huh. <laughs> so cool. Oh my god. So like, you know, for me and Lindy didn't come in for a while, so like we were like typing in the thing that we're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, that was like, it was just like cool to watch it it happened and like I'm so invested in it, everybody and it's like it started off so funny with like funny pirate voices and ha 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 and then it did not get did not stay funny <laughs> <laughs> did not the can turn but um oh my I'm even like more excited now than I was after the session zeros and I didn't think that was gonna be like possible because I was so excited <laughs> I feel like I've just been injected with caffeine and it's over, and I'm mad. But um, yeah, I I am so mad. We're not gonna keep playing right now. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, myth. <laughs> what do you think, my friend? Yeah, well, I thought it was wonderful. I I, I really just I'm super hyped to be playing this game. I uh, was in for 20 or so minutes, and then I just got, got to sit back and watch, and it was just amazing. Like, uh, I, like, it was, everybody is, uh, it's just, it's, it's such an honor to play with everybody, because it's just, with everybody here, uh, it's it just this, this one session, and just everybody fits into their role. Everybody also fits into the story. Like, the player knows when this is okay. It's not okay. This scene's got to play out. Everybody was very great on to latching onto the story and the narrative, and to continue in uh, in the scene where Will or the other players left off. And it's just amazing. And I'm just so happy to be here, and so happy to even just sit back and watch. It was just really, really awesome. Uh, I can't wait for more. Uh, it was such a badass. Uh, Exit and such a badass entrance, and I think for all of the characters too, badass exits in each scene and and badass entrances into the new one. It's just it's, I can't wait for next week. So I'm also with Sid. Uh, let's play forever. Period. <laughs> Agree. Let's play forever. Um, yep. Lindy, same uh, same question for you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so much fun. I just I pretty much sat back and watched the entire thing, but it was so amazing. I was like, "What? Wait, wait, two hours is over already? Oh my gosh, what happened? Oh my gosh, I want to keep going. Like again, forever. Basically, echoing these two up here. It was absolutely amazing. This is going to be a phenomenal story. I cannot wait to see where it goes, what happens. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. I just, I just, I can't wait. I want more. I want more. Like an addict. Just give me, <laughs> give me the D and D. Oh, I can line that D&D, &D, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, great stuff. And uh, Greg, same question for you, my friend. Um, everything everybody has said already. Uh, it, I'm going to tell you what. Will, you are a master of this. I came forward and said, hey, man, I have an idea for a wizard that gets the magic burned out of him. And I know this is coming. I wrote that this was coming. I created this circumstance. And then you throw it with an NPC that does it. Of course an NPC has to do it. There has to be someone that does it to him. But when you put a face to what happened to Flynn Ridge, I'm like, I'm going to kill this NPC who's doing exactly <laughs> what I want them to do. When I wrote for them, I want to kill them for listening to me. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I wanted to murder this, and I will. I'm going to really try really hard, everybody, to kill that NPC. Take it to the bank. <laughs> Love this crew. Love this crew. Like Sydney said, move along. I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> and Toll School. I mean, what more is there to say other than just interactions with each other? I mean, I loved that sort of goodbye scene between Sal and Flynn. I thought that was great. But, okay, is it just me? Or is Nicoletta Helen Mirren? 
That's oh, for totally, sure. She's Helen. That's I, exactly oh, who I, I had totally in my mind. I totally see her. I, Hugh Grant was there earlier. Then Helen showed up. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you know, especially after you know, cast, feeling this betrayal. What a cast. I mean, we got we had that 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 night you know and the, the whole you know the idea of them sort of strolling down the street and this offer probably maybe at any other time you know would have just been unthinkable but i totally believed sal just being like this family this family and especially nicoletta has more respect for me than my family you know having lost flynn having you know and not even being told that he had come back all that type of stuff i mean it's just it really hit home because i kind of wasn't sure how i was going to be able to play that off but absolutely i mean who wouldn't do whatever helen Marin tells him to do right <laughs> and uh <laughs> so uh no what a great time i can't wait for how this season unfolds um and just for our little piece of uh of learning in this what you all saw tonight was because we had a fabulous session zero and that shows you how important it is you know all that story that we talked and pitched all this is you get to see it come together in sort of an episode one establishing now a story that can move forward in all of these relationships that are going to be so complex so session zero session zero session zero and can't wait Absolutely. Well, my friends, we'll be back next week for the next episode of Learn by Play Water Steep Dragon Heist. Until next time, try not to throw too many net ones because we want to be here laughing when you do. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.